for the capital budgeting analysis. So let's start with trying to create some projects and the cash loads. So we can have project one. So take my data. So that is the data of our project one.
So once you're done, tell me so that we can get the net cash flows together. Done. You're done. So just put the on the same. So the NPV in Excel and the error in Excel, you don't use the way you are being taught in a class. That's how. If you try to use the way you are taught in a class, so use the formula for me the Excel formula. So we have project one, we have the number of years from year zero to year five. And we have the cash inflows. Then we have the cash outflows. For the cash outflow, that means the initial cost, and maybe the company has some exp the expenses to be deducted so that we have the net cash flows there. So let's get the net cash flows for every period. Uh, this one, we just this one. This one, I in a top priority, so you could just up the way it is. So for me to get the cash flow in this year, so that means I have equals, so it will be this one. Because this is a minus, so I just to add, so that I go opposite, so plus this one. So this one is negative. <laughs> then I enter. And I can drag that formula to zero thing in it. This is just the same with this one. I think this one can just copy paste the formula of this mini one. So select it all, copy, then paste it here to give you the same. The net card close. Because I have not started calculating those uh, NPV IR and the paper period. And unfortunately, the PI is not in the Excel sheet. The formula has not been formulated. It's just the NPV, the IRR, and the paper period. So now let's come to the NPV. Up of IPV number one. So we did the NPV in an equal sign. So once we have an equal sign, in your NPV, just type NPV. So the NPV is a puja. The money will be able to plan your paper to solve and open bracket. So once you open the bracket, it can finish a rate. So the rate, you go to the discount rate, which is this one. The finish a rate is your rate there. So finish a rate, then comma. Then in a finish the values. So the values are ranging, the net cash flows are ranging from here. So in, in project one, they, they, from year one, because the cash outflow is not an meaning. So select all of them. 
select all of them that way. So once you select all the close Tonga bracket, but remember we have the cash inflows that is calculated for the NPV. So for that to get the NPV, you have to deduct the what? The cash outflows in there. The initial, the initial cost of the project. So our initial cost of the project is negative 15. So already this one is in negative 15, so just go with the addition. So Fenya plus. But Fenya plus. What's my Fenya plus? Fenya the cash outflows. Then you enter. So come on, you can percentage. You can percentage, come on. Yes. So that means you need to look for percentage. Up for general. Come on. So finna here to for your percentage. This is not equal for percentage. So you have to get you the you can give the currency or you can give it the number. So let's give it a number or currency. So then PV is a value. If you like it, you can round it off so that we remove that one. So it's okay for percentage, for value, for number, how much the currency, whichever value that we'll be using. So our NPV is 494. So once you've done that, we just link it with the, uh, just copy paste it, copy. Then uh, try to paste it here, come here, come here, come So for this company, Guinea Nakuja, negative eight, for 80 watt, 83. So that means already you have the, you, you know the decision, which, one, which project can be taken because based on the NPV, isn't it? Positive NPV, you select it there, you accept. Negative, you do what? You reject it there. Yes. That's our. So already we have done that analysis. The project one will be taken. So let's go to our IRR. So Pena for IRR Apple. Pena equals to then IRR and you open the bracket. So the IRR is just asking you the all the values. First of all, all the values that should appear from the cash outflows to the cash inflows. So select all the all of the beginning with the cash outflow. Select all of them. Then you close your bracket and you enter. So our IRR is coming 18%. So if the project B can be undertaken based on the IRR. The IR we normally compare the watch, the rate of return that is coming in with the previous discount rate in the year. So if the IRR is bigger than the watch, the discount rate previously, that means the project should be undertaken in the year. So this one should be undertaken because IRR is bigger than this one, 8%, almost with the 10%. So copy it so that we are angalia to copy it. So copy. Then we have and you paste it here. So this one is coming 2%. So the discount rate is 8%, the IRR is 
So the two percent is below the the previous one, isn't it? So that means that one should be rejected, isn't it? So the payback period is that one. The NPV are those ones. So we cannot try to get the payback period. So the payback period we normally look at that uh, the project will be the number of years. Normally project in a five year that takes a day. Coming in more than five, because about five, five years. So we can do more than five years will be rejected today. It could have been up to pick up from where that we may talk it could be between one to five years. So the And looking at the paper period under Excel, he used the cumulative cash flow. That's the reason why you don't have to cumulative e. There is that is the cumulative cash flow. So you can create that cumulative cash flow. So in year zero, in year equals. So this one, you just remain this one automatically because you don't have anything from uh, another zero here. So just remain it that way. Uh, in your one, so you can pick now equals to. So in year one, the, the net cash flow in year one is 300. So finna 300. My finna 300. Yes. Uh, so, so I have to deduct the, pre the previous one. So I have a cash flow in uh, this zero, click on a negative 1500. So because it is negative, now go with the positive. So finna plus. Then finna 1500, the previous one, then finna enter. Then drag it so that you copy paste. He, he is going to be able to take the formula that way. So from this one, you can uh, select all of it. For that, you copy and apply a project too. For that, it's also pick. Yes. Can you, can, you, can you recheck the formula? Can I, I give the formula? You, you recheck the cumulative cash flow. Because uh, I was expecting it to be. Can you see? Ah, uh, that's 650. Uh, it should be negative 200. So this, this one, uh, the, we are here, isn't it? Yeah. Year two. Yeah, already we are in year one, yes, India. Let's start with the year one because everything is copied from year one. So, so, I'm, I'm saying eh? the, the one the one the one which has six fifty. Eh? Can you recheck the formula? Because the I formula. was expecting it to be negative, negative two hundred plus three fifty. Uh 
So if you collect from this one, mm. so the, the, this one is 300, send it here. That's it's okay. 1500, but this is plus, plus 300. Yeah. Yes, that's okay. That's okay. Uh -huh. The and last one, now, the that means one. I, I had because uh, community enough for the difference between the two, isn't it? Yes. But this one is now positive. It's okay. Because of? Yes, the next one now is the one which I'm saying is wrong. The next one. The one which has 650. 650. I was expecting it to be negative 200 plus 350. Able to create 10 a community, it appears. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Now the next one. But the next one is now from is you supposed to pick from this one. Come here, the meaning you call right, Tama. According to the formula. Yeah, can I put on gap six fifty money? I mean uh -huh. the cumulative in a manisha the previous year plus the current year. Yeah. Which should be now the case should be negative two hundred. Negative two hundred. But the next year, the next year is three fifty. This one is three fifty. Yes, so it should be negative two hundred plus three fifty. Make it a type of thing. Negative twelve hundred or negative two hundred. Equal sawa. P dot G can make it. Equal G eight. Plus F F to uh, one to one by one in a part one by one send it should be F nine F nine F nine so this one minus this one send it yes it will be F nine it will be fifty I'm gonna get a copy now Yes, yes, yes. It, it was uh, it was this one. It was uh, this one. Do you? Able to try another topic? Get one. We let a good angle. We delete. So you come with a pick, so it equals uh, equals to Cindy. We have 300 this one, Cindy. And now I'm supposed to subtract negative. I'm supposed to subtract this one, so I add it, Cindy. So, In nine. Yes. It's supposed to be this one, yeah. In, yes, yes. In nine, yeah. yeah. This one, so plus this one, and yes, yes. coming that way, send it here. So if you drag it, is it picking? Yeah, it was our. When you pick Gani? E8. E8. Uh, you can copy this one. And uh, here. That's the Kosawa, send it here. So now you can now get our what? Our payback period. So the payback period, you have to be keen on how you are trying to check something. So can you check to try your, your project one? The cumulative in year one is negative, isn't it? Yeah? In year two is also negative. Year three is also negative. 
But when you come to year four, is when the positive is starting, isn't it? So that means our payback is maybe starting from year four. Is it true? So uh, our payback period may be starting in year four. Then the project two, let's try to see the project two in Azakwa how much, what So project two is uh, in year five, isn't it? So project two is coming in year five. So let's say that in year project one is coming from four. So in equals to four. Then you open the bracket. Then finish something called absolute. Comma. So the last uh, where our project is start starting, the last negative is coming uh, in year three, isn't it? In uh, year three, which is negative, so click on it. I click on it. Then divided by the net cash flow in the next year. So our next year, the net cash flow in the next year, because this one the next starting, so the next cash flow is coming in year four. Then close it and then enter. Is it because you didn't select the absolute, you just typed it, a BS? Therefore, therefore it's just okay. No, the absolute, we, mm -hmm. we never selected it from Excel, we just typed it. Even if you select it, there is, there is no problem. It's it, 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 just okay. Absolute. And open the bracket. So you can try to pick that for. Then comma. So 
that are not divided by the net cash flow. That formula not coming in. Profina equal the hmm? Profina equals then our negative is ending in year four in year three, then starting in uh, the positive starting in year four. So Profina equals then four, then uh, because you are looking at the number between uh, the Payback period will come from the end between four and five. So plus, that's now a decap absolute. Then open the bracket. So the negative, the last negative in year three, divided by the net cash flow in year four now. Then close it. Now can I enter? Is now coming, send here. So equals because now the next year is year four. So because the year four will be in year, will be in year four or year five. So to me plus, then use the absolute formula. Then the cumulative of the last negative divided by the net cash flow of the next, next year after the negative. So that means our payback period is ranging between uh, four to five years in the year. It is maybe between here and here, or it is just year four. So we can just put that one into into number. So you can just have maybe 4.5. So there is the paper period may be between year four and year five. Then you copy the same. Copy the formula to second period. Uh, project two. So project three, that one. So if you see the project two, the payback period is coming beyond the, the, the required number of periods, five years, isn't it? It's coming in year six. So this one is above five years. So this one should be rejected. First of all, the NPV is negative. IRR is coming below the discount rate. And now the payback period is coming above the total number of expected periods, five years. So that means our project two should be eliminated so that we analyze only, we pick the project one.
Pakai pempesa, Pak. Yes. Pesa, Pak. Then again, uh, you can just try to create your pro yeah, project for dashboard. I hope now you know this procedure. Can you try to do that one? Select the table, the way it is. Then you end up in search. Then table. Then come in ahead, uh, click on that one. It selects those CF periods. Then you OK. Then select anywhere. Click in search. And I copy the table. You put the evil. And the apple. So that you drag your ears to the rows. Then it is out uh, in the cover loose. Then you try to rearrange them. You sort them. Then you click on the tab again. Then you go to analyze and like a table commission, people chart. Excuse me, you have sorted them to largest from smallest to largest to smallest. Okay. Yeah. Then you can hide this one, the way to hide is here. So this one is a uh, project one. That's so this is project one. Then uh, you can copy it to your dashboard. Then find it for Nini and Azafanya Evo, project two. Then project two, you analyze for your dashboard. I hope now you know those, those movements. And uh, there's something in Liberty last, last week with Mr. Austin. Did you come up with a group of Malaysia? You want to go to Malaysia? You want to go to Malaysia? Yeah. So, uh, Malaysia. so that is how you can do your loan amortization and the NPVs and your dashboard. So the biggest thing that is remaining under financial analysis, the elected Missouri Sun, I'm back to just uh, how to analyze your income statement, the cash flow and the balance sheets there. So that if you analyze the cash flow, the income and the balance sheet in a 3D something, the modeling, the financial modeling, that one now you can now use your idea of auditing to give a report, isn't it? Once you analyze the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flows, now you can use that information to give a uh, easily to monitor as one and they can up for your information. The next week I'm coming financial modeling for the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flows. So let's Mr. Austin come in to play to finish your kid looking back in. Then you call it a day. Sawa, sawa.
pasal macam punya dah leh. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, there's some data that I shared. Let's use it. We want to create a comparative analysis chart. So this is an example of a comparative analysis chart. By the time we are done, we should be able to have something like this. So you can see when I clicked on the manual, you can see some changes on the chart. Also, when I click on Ghana, I can see the change. So, let's create a chart that looks like this. And we can be able to analyze the data. So, I share that data. So, confirm if you've downloaded it or if you have it. This is the data that we
to confirm if you have the data so that we can start. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yes, I, I have it. Okay. So we have 10 employees. So they are from three countries, Nigeria, Ghana, and South Africa. So this is what they said in millions. These were the sales made in millions. So we have the data for 12 months that are here. And you know that analyzing this data, the way it is via as it is, will appear challenging. So we are going to use Pivot Table to analyze this worksheet data. As you know that Pivot Table is a powerful tool that can be used to calculate, summarize, and analyze the data so that you can be able to see the comparison and trends in the data. So as, as this, the way this data is, you cannot be able to make anything from it. But with Pivot Table, it will help you analyze it well. So to work with the Pivot Table, what you'll do, you should be able to click anywhere, any cell that is within that data set. So you can click anywhere, any cell that is part of the given data. Then you go to insert, you select Pivot Table. Insert, you select Pivot Table. And the option that you'll use, create Pivot Table using data in a table or range. So once you click on Pivot Table, some dialog box is going to appear. So, indicating or showing you what should be able to do the data. Whether you want your paper table to appear in a new worksheet or existing worksheet. So let's select a new worksheet. Okay, click on okay. So when you click on okay, you're going to see this. So this pivot table is named pivot table two. And then we have pivot table fields. So let's say your pivot table field is not, are not appearing, what will you do? A pivot table field is very important. So just go to pivot, the section indicated, pivot table, analyze. So click on pivot table, analyze. Then you come and select, click on field list. Just click on field list, and the fields, Bible table fields are going to reappear. Then these are the field list, and the, remember that the Bible table field list come from, are originated from the data set that we had on sheet one. We can rename this sheet. Be, let's rename it to be our database. You can rename that sheet to be the database. So you can see the field. We are the field of man, employment, employee, employee name, sales location, and the actual sales figure. So people table is sheet two. So those field names, the people table fields will come from the field. Names from the database sheet. 
So let's include them. We want month to be in rows. So when I select month to be rows, you see that I'll have the month from January to December. Then employment name, I want to filter because I'll be filtering each employee by name. So let's drag employment name to filters. Drag employment name to filters. So you see a field appearing, employment name and all. Then the sales. So let's drag it to sum of values. Let's drag the sales to sum of values. So what you should be able to know that value field will always work with numbers. So anything that is not number, when you drag a field that's not doesn't consist of numbers, you find an error. So we have everything that we have, will require to be able to analyze that data. Then come to this pivot table. We can see that here we have some of sales. So right, click on any cell there. We want to format the field settings. We want to work with average. We don't want to work with the grand total. So you can right click, right click on that. So after right clicking on that data, you come to the third option from the bottom, the third last value field setting. On value field setting, here we have sum of set, sum of set. With us, you want average. So choose the type of calculation that you want to use to summarize data from the selected field. As you want to use the calculation of average, select average. Then you select OK. So by doing so, you are going to see that we now have average of set. Average of set. Hope that is done unless you're having some difficulty. So, so let's start this data formatted to decimal places. So there's the section of number. We have the last the arrow pointing to the right, click on that, will be reducing the decimal places. Let's have the decimal places. Since we want to analyze this data in two ways, we want to compare how a given employee, let me go back to the database. Let's take, for example, how Osam Emmanuel compared to all the other employees. So let's have two fiber table fields. So there's no need, I can just copy this one. Let's copy this. And paste it just beside this table. Right, that we have to type of tables. But, so click anywhere within that type of table. Here, I do not want to work with all the employees, but I want to work with the selected employee. So you can go to the pivot table field and then and select employee name and select employee name so that that field can be removed from this second pivot table. In the first pivot table, we're working with the employee name as filters. Now in this second pivot table, let's remove it. Let's remove it. Oh, 
once done in Omni. Done. So we are going to create another table that is going to assist us to be able to retrieve data. So anytime we require data of any employee, so how did that employee perform compared with the rest? So let's have here man. Let's create a table man. Then on that map, we are going to have selected and then call. Selected and call. So let's have Jan. So you can write Jan, then drag it down to check. Then the next question, in these two fields, we should be able to have values. So that those values are going to come from this database. So when you see the database, we had a total of 121 values. So a total of how many rows? 120 rows, excluding the table, excluding the row containing the field names. So you can see with pivot table, it has summarized that data to be about 13 rows, or let's say 14 rows. So you can see that, that data from there. So you want this data here in these two five tables. You want to transfer that data to be here. And remember that this data will be the data of all employees. So that when I come to the filter and I've selected any name, here we have 10 names. So Israel Smith, if I if I'm able to, if I select Israel Smith, so I'll be able to see how did Israel Smith Israel Smith will be my selected employee. So how did Israel Smith perform in this month from January to February compared with the average of all the other employees? So compared with the average of all the other 10 employees. So how did Israel Smith so the function that we are going to use to be able to transfer this data from the two pivot tables so that we can have them in all these two columns. Which function are we going to use? Anyone? HLOOKUP. H. It's V lookup. Yeah, V lookup. Because we have man as the first field. So we want to retrieve the sales figure for the month. You can see that V lookup, the value that you want to look for or you want to identify, it must be to the left. It must appear, must be the starting value at the left. So at the left, most left column. So we use VLOOKUP, so equals VLOOKUP. So once you've written VLOOKUP, the first item in the VLOOKUP function is the lookup value. So what's the lookup value? The lookup value will be January. So click on the cell or select the cell containing January, which in our case is G6. 
for my case, not our case, for my case, it's G6, comma, then the table array. Remember that selected will be the second table. So I like this second pivot table. But since we we'll use this second pivot table to be able to generate data for all the employees, let's lock it. So apply, you are going to apply absolute referencing, meaning you add the dollar signs to the cell of cells of this second pivot table. It's from D3 to E16. You already know the shortcut for adding the dollar signs. So have your cursor before before D and then select F4 click, select F4, use F4 to add the dollar sign, click on F4 to add the dollar sign. Again, F4. So we have our dollar signs added. So after the table array, the next item should be the column index. So the values where we have the values containing or the column of average cells, where do we have? It's the second column. Row, re row levels is the first column. The average cells is the second column. So the column index will be two, comma, then do you need an approximate match or exact match? You need an exact match. So when you need an exact match, you can either click on this exact match or just write zero. By writing zero, you need an exact match. Close the bracket, then enter. So you can see that the first value here is 64.98. Then you can drag it down. You are going to have all the values. So we are working with two decimal places. So ensure that is done. So you can see for January, we have 64.99. That was the value here, 64.99. Inform me when you are done. Done. Now, let's do the same for all. You are going to use VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP. So what's the lookup value? Lookup value is done. The cell containing January E6. The table array. In this case, we are going to use the first pivot table as our table array. So highlight, sorry, highlight that table. It's from A1 to B16. So at the dollar sign, we are using absolute cell frequency. Comma, the column index where do we have the values in the column B. So this is the second column. So the row column index is number two. Comma, we need an exact match, so zero. Then you close the bracket. Then enter. Then you drag, drag it down so that you can be able to automatically add all the values. And you're going to show two decimal places. So we have 64 points. 
I know you might be wondering why do we have the same values. So if you want to see the value state, you can come to the employee, employee, employee name where we have all. Click on that, drop down, arrow. Then select. Maybe you can select blessing, Sakande. Okay. So when you select blessing, Sakande, you're going to see that there's a change. So you're going to see that it's different. Because for blessing, Sakande, it's taking the sales for January, then comparing it with all the other employees, seeing how did blessings perform. So in January, blessings did not perform well. In February, blessings performed well compared to others. In March, did not perform well compared to others. So when you want to remove on that filter, when you want to remove the filter, we have the section you can just go back to the section that had the drop down arrow. Click on it, then come back and select all. Then you click on OK. We can also make multiple selections. So come back to the drop down arrow. Then there's the, we have a checkbox just above the okay, just above okay. We have checkbox so you can click on it. So how many employees do I want? So let me remove the let me let them all. Let's say I want to select Osam Emmanuel, Janet Brown, and Masi Josh. And I click on OK. So how did these three employees compare with the others that we show on the month? So that also Possible. When I want to remove that, I can just come and click on that the drop down arrow section. Then, if I do not want to select multiple employees, I can uncheck that box. Then, just click on select all, click on OK. So, that's the first step of us analyzing that. Data. Also, from that, when you want to analyze that data, we can be able to add in slices. We we'll add in slices at some point, but let's rename this sheet. We can rename it to be our, we can rename it to be the support, or let's just rename it in this case, let's say, five or table. And we can let the database sheet to be the first sheet. So just drag this sheet this way, and it will be second sheet after the database. So we are going to use a line chart be able to analyze this data here. Because you already have the values. So let me highlight this sense. So I like this data. So the data having the table fields or the column fields to be marked, selected and all. I like that data. Then you come to insert. 
and by insert, we are going to use line chart. Just below that, we have line. So, 2D line. So, come and select. Come and select the second option, line with marker. But before that is done, I want you to do something. Just come to this table containing all. Select any employee of your choice. In my case, when you select blessings, so select any employee of your choice. Select any employee in the first pivot table. So just under employee name post. We had employee names to be filtered so that we can be able to filter through all the employees. Then come and highlight this data. So after highlighting, come to insert. So on insert, we are going to use line chart. So line chart is between bar and five. So we have insert line chart. So we are going to select the second last option. Start line with markers, line with markers, line with markers. So select line with markers. So after selecting line with markers, so you can see we have line chart. So the legend is showing selected versus all. Selected versus all. Tell me when that is done. Done. So we can see that all we have a line Light up. the line has a brown color. So click on the line for all. Click on it. So after clicking on it, right click. Then you come and select the last option, which is format data series. So under format data series, you can see that under format data series, we have diamond, then there's a pentagon and three parts. So select the first, the diamond, which is the fill and line option. Select the fill and line option. So under fill and line option, we have two items, line and markers. In this case, we want to use line. So ensure that line is selected. So we can see here we have line. So line, come and work with, select solid line. So after you've selected solid line, then come to color. Let this one be black. Let's use black. Then let's reduce it width to around 1.7542. Let's work with one point. Let's make it two. Sorry, please bigger 1.75. Then come to dash type. All let's select dash type after we there's the compound type. Skip the compound type, then come to dash type. So in dash type, there's the drop down. So let's select the dash that we want can be square dot or round dot. So let's have the round dot. 
effects are from the then street still scroll down by moving down there's the last option we have a checkbox there smooth lines click on that checkbox so that you can check it so that we have a smooth curve done with that so for all you can be able to see a smooth curve on your end do you have a smooth curve like mine from your head or should yes. I repeat Okay. When you have it, you can do the same or select it. So click on any markers in yeah. the selected line. Right click. Then you go to the last option, which is format data series. Format data series. We are going to use the first option, which is fill and line. Select solid line. The line should be solid at the line, solid line. So in this case, let's use a different color. So we let me pick red. Red comes. We have thin colors, then standard colors. So the second one in the second one from left under standard colors. So let's reduce its width to 1.75. Then in this case, we are not going to use the dash type. So just scroll down scroll down till the last option which is smooth line there's a tick box there let's select it or let's take it so when we done that we are going to have you can see a smooth line so do not we are not done yet so just beside line you can see marker so click on marker So under marker option, I'm just going to change the color. Oh, it's blue, we can leave that. In any case, the color was red because I want my markers to be able to, so that I want my markers also to be clearly visible. So let me just remove that. So you can see my markers are clearly visible. Do you have a chart such as this? So let's create a new sheet. Create a new sheet. Then come and cut this chart. Click on it, then you can select Control X. So then let's come and paste this chart on this sheet that we've created. Expand it a little bit. Then leave some space here at the top the way I have mine. So let's take the legends to the, the legend entries to appear at the top. So click on the legend, then you right click. The last option, format legend, format legend. So under format legend, select top. So 
Next stop. And that from match right yet stop. Then since this sheet will be our dashboard, you can come to on this card sheet, come to we can come to view. Come to view. So in line with home, we have home insert page layout formulas data. You'll see view just after review. So the first item under view is the workbook views. I do not need that. So come to show. So under show, remove grid lines and tick grid lines and tick grid lines. So when you are what it's me. Yes. Excuse me. What if you are um, that show and grid lines are not like they're not highlighted? What do you do? It's oh, just, okay. Sawa. So we anti yes, yes anti okay. grid lines. Okay. So that this sheet will appear to be blank with no grid lines. Collins, are you sorted? Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Hmm. Then I want you to click on the chat. So when you click on your chat, you can see some plus sign just beside the chat. So click on that plus sign. It means chat elements. We have to add or remove or change chat elements. Click on it. Then go to the grid lines. So under grid lines, do not untick it, but select grid lines. So there's some arrow. At the extreme right of grid lines, click on that arrow. Then let's add. You want to add primary major vertical. You also want to add primary minor horizontal. And you also add primary minor vertical. So let's add those grid lines. So your chart should appear as as mine. For lack of a better term, we've somehow created a graph book. So when you want to plot, these are the grid lines. We've added the grid lines. For me when done. Done. Then you can click on your chat. Then just beside chat design, we have format. So under format, this shape. So under shape fill, we have in colors. So we are going to work with the in colors at the extreme left. So skip white. At the extreme left, first we have white. I'm not going to work with white. Just after white, there's this thin, thin colors. At least it looks some more better. Let me select that. Is 
that gray? It appears to be gray. It appears to be gray. So I think I've modified this chart to the best option possible. But I still cannot be able to use this chart to analyze. Remember, we had 10 employees, and you also have these employees are from different countries. So how can I be able to add that side that when I've selected an employee, for example, Osami Man, and also should be able to, in this chart, that's it, that the changes should be able to appear in the chart. So what will I do? Let's go back to our fiber table, the sheet containing fiber tables. Let's go back to that sheet. So click on the first fiber table. So click on the first pivot table. So anywhere within any cell within that pivot table, then come to pivot table analyze. So under pivot table analyze, there's refresh source data. Okay, we have this with this pivot table at the extreme left. After that days, active field. After that days, group. After group days, filter. So under filter, come and select insert slicer. Select and click on insert slicer. So how do you want to use this slicer? So under slicers, this slicer, we are going to use employee MP name. So click on end name, then OK. So we are going to have a slicer appearing here, containing all the names of all employees. So we want to cut this slicer and take it to the sheet containing the chart. So while the slicer is still highlighted, you can cut it either manually or Control X. Then let's paste it beside the sheet control P. So let's let me drag it so that it can be beside and in line with this chart. Come on, shake him. I can't position it well. Let me position it. Then, also, you can expand it so that it be of the same height as our chart.
Yes, yeah, sir. Now in line, now you can see when uh, you can click on any name and observe what's happening in the chart. For some Emmanuel, you can see their changes. So this one for some Emmanuel is comparing with other people. So for some Emmanuel overperformed in in January compared to all, we selected Osam Emmanuel is the selected employee. So compared to all, all you can see as appears in dotted line, black. So the selected pass appears in a continuous red line with blue markers. So when I've selected on Osam Emmanuel, blessings, you can see there, okay. But that's not the only. That's not the only parameter that we can use to compare. So you can see the table we had named. Let me take you to the database. So there was month. Already month, you can be able to see that from the from the graph. So we can see the months we have from January to December. Then we had. The database you also had employment name. We already have a slicer for any employment name. And the values, you can see this then. The values appear on the vertical axis of the, of the chart. So what's remaining is sales location. So let's add in another slicer containing the sales location. So you can click on the first private table, any trade in the first private table, then come to private table, analyze. So we know Lysa will be under filter. So from left, it will be the fourth item. And I click on insert slicer. So we need sales location. So on insert slicer, let's select sales location, then we click on OK. Click on OK. So when you are done, you can inform me. Done. Though my, my location is not in the same order with yours, or if that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So while my slicer is still highlighted, you can come to slicer tools. So come to slicer tools. So at the extreme left, what can you see? Below, we have slicer, then followed by slicer styles, followed by a range, then followed by buttons. So under buttons, we have the first item is the column. So column, we have one. So in this case, because you want these place locations to appear at the top, let's make the columns to be three. Make the columns to be three. Inform me when you are done. Make the columns to be three. Done. Then now you can cut that slicer, control X, and let's come and paste it the section where we have our dashboard for the chart. At the top, paste it there at the top. So let's reduce its size. Then expand it so that it can be of the same size. It can cover this whole area.
this one is a little bit bigger. You have something like this, looking like mine. We are done? Yes. Give me some time. Okay. When you are done, you can click on the first slicer. Still come to slicer tools. So on slicer tools, we have the second item, which is slicer style. So you can be able to select any, but on slicer style, there's a drop down arrow where we have more. So there's the light and dark options. Let's come to the dark options. So under dark option, let's pick the last one. The last one, light green. That's it. Side that you can see now the countries. The selected country will be dark green. The ones that are not selected are light green. So this will help us differentiate and show us which country are we working with currently. Okay. Click on the first slicer. Then come to slicer tools. So under slicer tools, there's the second option slicer style. So we can see different colors. So come and select the drop down arrow, which shows more. So when you click on more, you can see that the upper option we have light, and the one down is dark. So under dark, select the last option because. Green. So now you can see that the selected country in my case is South Africa. So you see the selected country will appear to be dark green. The ones that are not selected are light green. So let's do the same for the slicer containing employment, employee names. So click on it. Then you come to slicer tools. So click on the drop down arrow more. So here let's select the second option. Second option, which is light orange. So you can see the person we selected, the employee we selected will have an orange color, like blessing or some Emmanuel after. When done, listen for me. 
Done. Okay. That is how our chat is looking nice, but we need to make some modifications to it. We need to give it a title. Let me I'll drag my chat a little bit down. So click on the chat, just drag it down, the first chat, then align it with the slices that we added. So I want to create some space. So there's nothing new I've added, I've just dragged it down. And here I have my chart. So I wanted some space here at the top. You can see that our chart is taking shape. So you can see what's here. What's in this other chart? So you can see that we are almost done. So I want to add in this blue background. And then ensure that I've added title. Now you can see here I've selected Coffee Omo, Joy Toby. It's going to show me self comparison, Joy Toby versus all. So let's add in this element, the chart. So to add in the blue, background, so come to insert, insert, then under insert, there's the first option which is tables, at this point we do not need tables, but we need illustration, so under illustration, come and select shape, select shape, so under shape, there is the rectangle with rounded corners. So do not just select rectangle. That's the first rectangle. But after rectangle, we have rectangle with rounded corners. So rectangle with rounded corners. So if you've not recently used it, this one will be under just come to rectangle. So under rectangle, you can see lines, then rectangles. So there's the second option, rectangle with rounded corners. Select that. So once you've selected it, come and drag it to ensure that my all, the whole chart area is covered. Ensure that the whole chart area is covered. The next question will be, it has covered my chart. I cannot be able to see the chart. So right click on this shape that you've added, right click on it. So after you right click on it, we have the option of cut, copy, paste. Ignore that. After that, we have edit text, edit points, group, Bring to front, send to back. In this case, click on send to back. Send to back. Click on send to back. So once you click on send to back, you now see that your dashboard or chat end has some new background. So let's increase its size a little bit. Thank you. 
Please inform me when you are done, or in case I was too fast, if you need something to be illustrated. Done. Did you? Does your uh, does the blue blue background cover the chart? Does yes. The, so you've not managed to. So your chart is still not visible, or it is. It's so, like yours. It's like mine. Okay. Same for calling, same case for calling. Okay. Yes. So you're almost done. So we want to add a title. It's not chat title, but you want to add a title to this background. So come to insert. So under insert, we have tables, illustration, add-ins, charts, tours, sparkline, filters, link, symbol. So come to text, the second last option. So under text, there's a drop-down arrow. So when you click on that drop-down arrow, there's text box, head and footer, so with us, we want a text box. So click on that, click on text box, and come and add that text box here. So press on the, continuously press on the left button of the mouse so that you can be able to add that text box. Yeah. So after we've added the text box, So which type of chart was this? So it is a comparative. Comparative analysis. Sales chart. Because we are comparing sales. So let me reduce the size of this. And position this, position the text box at the center, sorry. Then let me take it to the back. Sorry, not taking it to the back, but let me also make that text box to up. So tell me if you've added a text box and you've added the title, the, these words, comparative analysis sales chart. Yes. So let's add a blue background to that text box. Click on it. Click on the text box. Then come to shape format, which is the last option, shape format. So under shape format, come to shape field. 
shape fill and on shape fill let's select blue because we had a blue background let's have it blue. so once you've made it blue it will also have a blue a blue background yeah first developer You have to click on the text box first. Click on the text box. Then you come to shape format. On shape fill, you select thin color blue. Then while still on that text box, come to shape outline. After just below shape fill, come to shape outline. Then click on so under outline, we have theme colors, then standard colors. Just below standard colors, click on no outline. Click on no outline. Click on no outline. So that it just have purely a blue background. So when done, please inform me. The last thing that we should be able to add to ensure that our chart looks like this is just this the chart title. So that when I click on coffee, you can see coffee is appearing here, coffee or more. So what will I do? So what will I do to ensure that is done? So that you can be able to see that it's coffee or more appear. So I want you to go back to come back to five volt table. Come to five volt table. So under five watch table, you saw that here we have a field for all. You can either compare it with all, and you can also compare with multiple items. And then there's also selected. So what we are going to do is let's add in a formula here equals to in any cell. Then if if, if, open a bracket, if, open a bracket, so once you've opened a bracket, you've seen logical test, but here we have multiple options, so add in or, we have multiple options, add in or, then open a bracket. So the first option here is that we have multiple options. So in cell B1, you can either, sorry, let me remove that. I cannot illustrate anything because I still have my formula bar. Under cell B1, I can either have all selected employed, or you can be able to select multiple items. So that's why we have if or. So equals to if, then because we have multiple mm -hmm. items, we have or, or. So our first logical, so once you've added or, there's going to be logical one and then logical two. So in our case, logical one will be cell B1. So cell B1 can either be. So come and click on B1, where we have the name just after employment name, in line with employment name. Click on that cell, then equals, then equals, okay, opening quotation marks, 
opening quotation mark. Open a bracket. So it can be multiple items. Close the bracket. And then add closing quotation mark. So it can either be multiple items, then comma, or comma. So that's the first option. Or you can have B1 equals Opening quotation marks, open a bracket, all. Then closing quotation marks. So this will be our first logical test, so you can close the bracket. This is our first logical test. This is our first logical test. Meaning this cell, in this cell you can either have multiple items or all. Then have a comma. So what was appearing here is selected. Selected. So add that selected, opening quotation mark, add, selected. You can either have that selected, closing quotation mark, so where this, will this selected be? So this selected can be also on cell B1. So you can have cell B1 where you are not selected, like in this case, I have this name displayed, Julian Mesa. So select on that cell B1. Select on cell B1. Then now close the bracket. So we can only have these two options. So in cell B1, I can have multiple items or all, or at times I can select the employees. I can have the selected employees, then enter. So when you click on enter, what appears? You see a name there. Excuse me. Yes. Um, I, I, um, I had an internet uh, disconnection. So mine, when I, when I press enter, mm. the um. I'm getting a error message. The formula is missing and opening and closing parentheses. Okay. Let me delete and then we do it together again. Okay. Yeah. Equals. Mm -hmm. If open a bracket. But if you open a bracket, when you want to use the logical statement, if, there will be the logical test and value, if true value false. We do not want that. Because as you want to display, want to display various items. Like just before that, let me just remove mine for first. You can see here, when I click on this, what appears, I have all then the employee names, then I, there's also there are situations where I can also be able to select multiple items or multiple employees. So if equals to if, open a bracket or then open the first bracket. In cell B1, what can we have? So click on B1, then equals opening quotation marks, open a bracket, then write multiple items, multiple 
items. Close the bracket. Then you click closing quotation mark. So that's the first thing that will appear that can appear under cell one. Because you saw when you are selecting multiple items, what was appearing there was multiple items. Then comma. Then in that cell B1, what can we also have? In that cell B1, we can have all. We can have all. So come and click on B1 equals to opening quotation marks, open a bracket, then write all. Then closing quotation mark. And since these are the two items, you can so see that when we click on that drop down arrow, you could see that all was written there. And you could also see that multiple items was also there. So these are the first close this bracket, close this bracket. So after the opening quotation marks close have a bracket there. So you can see that that bracket is, let me say orange, or if it's not orange, it appears to be red. Then you can have a comma. Then you can see that for the selected, we can see around 10 employments there. So I'll not be going around clicking and only one employee name at a time can appear on that cell. B. So I use the word selected in this third table after the two Python tables. I use selected to represent what will appear on that cell B1. That if, if an employee name is appearing there. So after that comma, you can have opening quotation marks then write selected, selected, opening quotation marks, then you write selected or type selected, then closing quotation marks, then comma. So this selected, what should it represent at times? Where will it appear? So this selected should be in cell B1. So click on cell B1. Then close the bracket. Close the bracket. Then enter. You have a name of there? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay, we are now sorted. Now come here and select all. Come back to your to the first pivot table. There's the drop down arrow. Then select multiple items. So and select. Then you click on OK. When you do that, you'll see selected appearing. Yeah. Because the reason why selected was appearing there, you also included it in the formula. So there was no mistake. So don't see it as if you've made any mistake. So let me just come back here and uncheck all the values. Then let me select Janet Brown. So when I select Janet Brown, so you can see that Janet Brown will be appearing there. Then I want to change the legend entries. So in my chart, instead of this being selected, I want it to be when I've selected Janet Brown, it's going to show 
Janet Brown versus Paul. So come to selected. So in the column of selected, in this second table, so in the column of selected, so let's remove this selected word. Then in the formula bar, let's have equals, then equal to the name that's appearing here. Then you enter. Say that any time it's Janet Brown, it's going to show Janet Brown versus Paul. Done. Kindly repeat. Okay. Especially on that part of uh, selecting all. I don't know why when I select some values, it comes to not applicable. Okay, go back here. Come here. Mm -hmm. And take select multiple items. Okay. And take that. Mm -hmm. Done. Yes. Now you can select any name like Israel Smith, then click on OK. OK. Done? Yes. So in the table that we created, where we had month, we have month, then there's the field name selected, right? Mm. So remove that, click on that field. Okay. Then come to formula bar. Mm -hmm. Clear everything. Mm -hmm. Then once you've cleared everything, equals, click on equals, have equals. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Then click on the cell containing the name. Then enter. Okay. Does a name appear there? It's like yes. All. Okay. Mm. Then we want to develop out the title for our chart. So on any cell just beside, let's have equals. Then what we want is sales comparison. So opening quotation mark. So sales comparison. Sales comparison. So open a bracket. Have closing quotation mark. Closing quotation mark. And since you want to add in an item, come and have and and what are we adding to this statement? We are adding this the name, which name appears there. So click on that cell. Click on the cell. In this case, this. The name appearing here is Israel Smith for my case, and it is on cell. Which cell contains Israel Smith? Click on that cell. It's day two. And since I want to add in some space, so have and click and and opening quotation marks. Then click on spacebar. So you want to create space. So I do not want my words to appear as if there's no space. Closing quotation marks. Hope you are all at the same stage. We are moving together. If anyone is not there, just tell me so that we start it 
again. But this is the last step. Actually, we are done. You just want to add in a title to the chart. Are we together? Yes. Okay. And so we've added closing quotation marks and then add and add and Then opening quotation marks. Sorry. Opening quotation marks. Passes. 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 Have some space. Then add all, all. Add a closing bracket, then closing quotation mark, then closing quotation mark. Done. So enter. You can see what's here. Sales comparison. Israel Smith versus on. So this statement I want to add it. This statement I want to add it to be to here, where we have the chart title. So come and click on the chart. Chart title area. So highlight it. Highlight that chart title. So after highlighting, come to the formula bar. Then write equals. Then come back to the pivot table. Shift. Then the first cell containing this name, sales comparison. Click on the first cell. Click on it. Then enter. What's appearing as your chart title? What's appearing as the chart title? Sales comparison. Then in the legend entry, you can see the red line is represent the sales value for. We have Israel Smith, then all. Done. Done. Okay. Now you can see how good it is. So when you want to make them visible, you can just make these items to be bold. Form. Let's bolden it and make it to be black in color. Same as legend entries. Let's make them bold and black. Also, I can click on the vertical. Axis values home. Let's make it bold. Same as the horizontal axis. Let's make it bold and black. Maybe for my chart to be so that someone can easily understand my chart. What's appearing here? Let's highlight this comparative analysis chart. Let me make it white so that it's clearly visible. Yeah. Then for someone to clearly understand my chart, so let me label the vertical axis. 
so that a person can know what it represents. So just click on the chart and come to plus. Then there's the axis title. Come and select the arrow. I only want to add primary vertical. So for primary vertical, click on primary vertical. Then here, I light it. So after I light it, just come and double it, cells in million. So let's also make it bold. So, you can click on Ghana. When you click on Ghana, observe what's happening to your chart. Under slices, just come and click on Ghana, then observe what's happening to the chart. So, under, you see the employees who are, the, who are from Ghana, you'll see there are some who highlighted joy or few. So select on any of them so that you can observe now. So you can clearly see the changes. Yeah. And now the name changes to what? The chart name now changes. Sales comparison. Joy to be buffers. So you can use it to analyze. And you know how to remove slices. So under the slices on the sales location, we have the last item there, clear filter. Or you can just press Alt plus C, clear filter. And also for employee name, we can clear filter. So once you clear filter, clear filter, you can see that there. Now what will appear there will be selected and all. So when you go back to the pivot table, they'll have the same value, selected on. I think with that, I'm done. And this is a question. Yeah. At, your, at your time, you can practice. You can see if you can be able to create it as it is. Question? I think I'm done. Silence mean we've understood or to mechoka. It's been a marathon. But let's stop it there for today. In case there's a question, you can you'll ask it in the group and it will be addressed. See you next Sunday. Thank you. Welcome.